Um, welcome to the sixth and final um, webinar in our webinar series. Um, I know it's a busy time and I appreciate everyone for sticking through and getting to the end. Um, I, for one, am going to a meet the teacher immediately following this. So surely you're all busy too. Um, tonight we are talking about tools to help you on your retrofit journey. And we have a speaker from Project Neutral and from uh, Lens Own Greener Homes London program. Um, as always, we are working with uh, Chippewas of the Thames First Nation ourselves. I'm Marianne Griffith um, from the London Environmental Network. And the program that we're working on is funded through Natural Resources Canada. We do ask that you mute your microphone unless you'd like to speak, then by all means, unmute it and speak up and ask any questions that you'd like. Um, as mentioned, we are at uh, six of six. We do have a new piece of information to share at the bottom there. We have selected a date for the final tour of the retrofit pilot home. Um, it is going to be on Wednesday, October the 19th from 4.30 p.m. until 6 p.m. And it will be at the Stacy residence um, on Chippewas of the Thames First Nation. We do have a special guest joining us and serving some traditional corn soup. Her name is Tanya Brandt, and she is a friend of mine that I worked with on um, Six Nations of the Thames, or sorry, Six. I'm trying to fix my slide at the same time as talking, but it's not working. Six Nations of the Grand River. Um, and she is going to be coming to serve some food. We are gonna have a blower door test demonstration um, and then a tour of all the features of the home, including the heating, cooling, um, water heater, the solar panels, the insulation, and just take a look at everything live and in person. Uh, we'll have some sustainability kits and some backyard composters to be giving away. And the whole, um, we're inviting anyone who is on uh, Chippewas of the Thames First Nation, Oneida First Nation, Muncie, Delaware, or a resident of London to come on out and um, enjoy some food and check out the home. Um, as previously mentioned, we are a registered charity and our mission is to help London and surrounding area become more resilient and sustainable. We are recently um, an Energuide service provider. So we are providing the audits that are necessary to take advantage of any of the incentive programs, including the Greener Homes Federal Program, um, the CMHC $40,000 zero interest loan, and the Enbridge program. We represent over 40 environmental organizations across the area. Um, you can see many of them here. Um, we deal with lots of different environmental topics. So if there's anything that um, speaks to you, feel free to reach out and we can put you in touch with one of our member organizations. Um, we did start working with people out of the Thames First Nation a few years ago and um, helped develop the program on the bottom right in collaboration um, and got some funding to, to start this off. So we've just completed the retrofit pilot and we're now gonna move into trying to um, increase some incentives and access to Energuide audits for uh, the rest of the community as well. Um, you see we have many programs tonight. We've got um, Nicole here who's going to speak specifically about our Greener Homes London program and the tools that we've developed to help folks try to live more sustainably at home. Um, the Chippewas of the Thames First Nation had a community energy plan developed in 2020, which identified improving energy efficiency, reducing energy costs, and assessing renewable energy solutions in the community as top priority. And that, again, where we um, came up with the idea to do a pilot or a demonstration home for a resident, and then um, hopefully use that pilot to get some more incentive and uh, programming available for the rest of the community. This webinar series is part of that process. And there are folks here today that are learning about uh, sustainability to become community champions. Um, and without any further ado, I will bring on our first speaker. Jake Miller is here from Project Neutral and he is the director of Project Neutral. He enjoys building websites and programs that bring accessible climate action to individuals. He believes that a low carbon lifestyle brings a higher quality of life and is available to all. 
Jake holds a Master's of Information from the Faculty of Information at the University of Toronto. He loves running in the ravines around his home. Take it away, Jake. Thank you so much for that intro. It's, it's really nice to be here. Um, so welcome, yeah, my name is Jake Miller. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of Project Neutral. So I'm really excited for today's workshop where we're gonna explore our climate impacts using Project Neutral's carbon footprint calculator. We're a charitable organization that helps people understand and take action on their climate impacts. And we're a project on Make Way Share platform. So what is climate change anyway? Can I tell you in two slides? I'm gonna to try to. Um, all you really need to know is that pollution is causing the planet to warm. The pollution is mainly caused by burning fossil fuels, things like coal, oil, and natural gas. This releases carbon dioxide or CO2, though there are a few other gases that don't get quite as much attention like methane. Together, we refer to these pollutants as greenhouse gases or GHGs. Now, GHGs are actually essential to life on Earth. This is what keeps the Earth at a livable temperature. Without them, it would be too cold for plants and animals to survive. But the problem is that human activity has caused a large increase in the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. And this creates this blanket of pollution around the Earth that traps in heat. So the planet has already heated up by one degree. And if we stay on the same trajectory, it could reach two degrees by 2050. Increasing the Earth's temperature by a couple of degrees may not sound like much, but it's sort of like the planet having a fever. One degree and you're sick. Two degrees, you're in the hospital. And three to four degrees is really, really bad. So what are the two main things we need to tackle in order to fix climate change? First, we need to stop polluting. That means we need to stop pulling out fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas that release carbon emissions into the atmosphere. And two, we need to help the planet reabsorb carbon dioxide that's in the air. We can do this by preserving forests and wetlands, planting more trees, protecting soil health, and marine ecosystems. Now, maybe you're thinking, hey, those are pretty massive solutions. Can I really do anything? And anyway, aren't all the big companies responsible for most emissions? Well. Yes, and it's also true that our actions can catalyze broader change. Companies are run by people too. And they take their cues from consumers like you and me. Plus a good chunk of emissions are caused at the household level. So no, it's not up to you alone to solve climate change. You're just a group of great people who are joining me today, um, but you are powerful. And the things in your life that you can change are meaningful. The thing to keep in mind is that while we need the government to enact policies that will make all this stuff happen really, really fast, we have power too. We can push them to take action, and we can also make swaps in our own lives that help build momentum for change. Okay, so how do we know what we can focus on? We'll start by understanding where our own emissions come from. Measuring our carbon footprint shows us the climate pollution that we have the most control over and helps us figure out what we can do. Our carbon footprint calculator will help us to learn about our impact in five main categories. Home energy, heating, cooling, and powering your home. Daily transportation, how you get to work and run errands. Travel, long distance trips, air travel. Uh, food, what types of food we buy and eat. And finally, waste, the things we throw away and the places we send them to. These five categories don't encompass everything. There are other areas to look into when considering your carbon footprint, such as the type and amount of clothing you buy, and where you invest your money. But these five categories are a good place to start. So across Canada, about 45% of greenhouse gas emissions are connected to household level choices, both through direct emissions like exhaust from our vehicles and indirectly through generating electricity, producing the food we eat or making the stuff we buy. This graph shows how these categories, as well as emissions from industry, compare in Ontario. As you can see, transportation is huge as a category. And this isn't letting industry off the hook. That just means that the choices we make have an impact and collectively, we have the power to make real change. Okay, just before we dive in and measure our footprints, where do you think most of your emissions come from? 
make your prediction about your highest category will be. Make a, make, try to guess what you think it might be. If you'd like to, um, maybe type what you think the best, highest category will be in the chat, um, and we can, we can see what it looks like there. Here, I'll pop up the chat so that I can see if anyone's, anyone's put in any guesses. My furnace, so home energy as a category, quite likely. Um, anyways, you could just do it as a thought experiment too. Transportation, yeah, based on that last graph, right? All right, so you can keep popping those into the chat. But before we start, I wanted to ask a question. Is anyone feeling a bit nervous about finding out your carbon footprint? I think most people probably are, right? Um, I just want to reassure you before we get started in this process. This isn't about feeling shame or blame, and that's for a few reasons. Firstly, the goal of all of this is to make emissions visible. CO2 has the unhelpful propensity of being invisible. So you can actually see all the CO2 that we're producing. But when you measure it, you can see where your emissions are highest. And that shows you where you have a chance to make changes. It's not an occasion to feel guilty. It's a chance to understand. And secondly, the world we live in wasn't designed with climate change in mind. There are some places you may not actually have much choice. For example, uh, you can't take public transit where it doesn't exist. Where you have emissions that you can't easily reduce, that can be an area for advocacy, working to change the system itself to give us all cleaner options. All right, so if, if anyone wants to follow along, you can do it on your phone. You can open up a new tab. You're gonna go to www.projectneutral.org. And I'm going to put, I'll just pop that link into the chat for everybody. So it's extra easy. It's fun if you can follow along with me. Um, and don't, don't worry about trying to watch my screen at the same time. Just focus on your own. Um, or if you just want to watch me do it uh, and do it later at your own pace, feel free to. So I'm going to click the link here. And here we are on the Project Neutral website. Now you can click up here to measure your footprint or down here to get started. And what you'll need to do is to create a little account on our site. And the reason that you do this is because while together, we're just gonna be doing the simple getting started survey that gives you a really rough estimate. You can actually do a lot of deep dive surveys. You can take actions as part of, as part of this. So there's a lot of additional work you can do uh, on our site. So it's worth having an account so you can hop back in and not lose your progress. But for this, you can put in your first and last name if you so choose. I'm just gonna make a very fake account. I'm gonna do fake Jake. This is fake at fake.ca. Um, I would hope that you use a real account so that you can reset your password if anything happens. And you can have to put in your password twice. It has to be eight characters long. So that should do it. All right, we created an account. Here we are in, and we're taking straight into this getting started survey. And this says it takes about three minutes. We might be a little bit slower because I'm going to talk a lot at you so everyone can follow along at, at a good speed. So we're ready to get started. So first, we want to know where you're living. And I'll imagine that fake Jake lives in London, um, and there's all sorts of different communities. I'm going to say I'm from Nelson Park um, and because I have no idea what my uh, my code, my air postal code would be, I'm going to make a guess there. And then we need to kind of know about the composition of your household. How many people are in it? So in my case, there's myself and my wife and my two daughters. Uh, we look at adults and teenagers and children under 13 years old. So you can put in, punch in the, the, the composition of your household right there. Then we want to know a bit about the type of home that you currently reside in. So if you live in a detached, a semi, a townhouse, we're going to ask you how many bedrooms that house has and how many stories, including the basement, uh, you have that are habitable. Um, I live in an apartment. Um, I, I live in an apartment, um, and it has two bedrooms. Although if it was a bachelor, I would say it had one bedroom. I rent it, and it's a new building, um, but it could be mid-century, between 30 and 80 years, or more historical over 80. So 
you just punch in what works best for your home. Then we want to know a bit about how you get about in your daily life. So uh, for traveling, I do a lot of walking. I do public transit. And even though I don't own a car, I like to count the driving that's kind of done on my behalf. So if I took a taxi every week, or in my case, my parents pick up my daughters and take them around someplace and visit them. So I'm going to put in, punch in some information about that driving, the, the ones that are done by my parents. So they drive a compact car. I'd say on an average weekday, they might drive about me and my daughters around about 10 minutes amortized uh, on an average kind of weekday. And on average weekend, probably about 30 minutes of driving. And their vehicle, it's not a plug-in electric yet. It's still a gasoline car. All right. Now we want to know about air travel. Air travel is like the big ticket item when it comes to uh, travel emissions. So we asked the question, did anyone in your household travel by plane in the past 12 months? And in my case, it's no. We, we still haven't really gotten out much since COVID. But if, you, if the case is true for you, then we're going to want to know how many round trip flights people in your household took. So if I took two business trips just myself, that would be two. Um, and if my family of four went on a vacation together, uh, that would add up to six. So once again, in my case, no, but punch in the numbers for yourself. Now we want to know about what your kind of diet is like. Um, how would you describe yourself? I'm trying to be more vegetarian, but I think I still fall in that average omnivore uh, category. Um, how often do I throw out leftover or spoiled foods. Never is truly like you You never do it. Like you don't even need a combo spin almost. So I'm going to have to be honest. Sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes something goes goes bad in the fridge and I miss it. So, But I do have a combo spin that I use. And then finally, we're going to know, need to know a little bit about waste that I produce. So we have, we have two kind of categories for estimating your waste. If you live in a house, chances are you wheel a bin to the curb for pickup, and you can tell us what size your bin is and how often pickup is. I believe in London you have this unique six-day collection schedule, so you can punch that. Um, in my case, though, I live in a I live in an apartment building. I just throw bags down a chute. So, how many grocery size bags um, would you say you produce in a week? And in my family's case, I'm going to guess about two. Finally, does your household recycle? Yes, we do. So if you're interested, um, we, we have a partnership with the City of London. And as part of doing this tool, you can opt to share your email with our partners at the City of London, and they can tie you into some newsletters and work that they're doing. I know that they're planning on sending out a pretty big newsletter and, and kind of building off this now. So you can say yes, because this is a fake account, I don't want to give them gummy data. So I'm going to say no. Um, and because of the city, you can read this very detailed fine print and you can email our partner if you have any questions about that. And then how did you hear about Project Neutral? Well, in our case, it's through a workshop. I'm going to just put in Len workshop. Um, that's helpful for us to kind of know where incoming people are coming from. And if you have thoughts about the calculator so far, you can, or anything about uh, measuring your footprint, uh, you can pop it in there. Uh, but for now, we're going to hit this calculate my results button. And the mighty gears are turning. And we've produced these results. So here we are on the dashboard that tell us what our footprint is. So for a household of my size, so two adults and two kids, the average footprint is 24.4 tons of CO2 equivalents. My carbon score, it's about half that, 12.8. But the top 30% of Project Neutral users can get even lower. They can get it down to 12. So I've got some room for improvement. So the yellow is the average. Teal is me. Dark blue is the kind of the goalpost, maybe. But let's look a little bit deeper across all of the separate categories. So obviously I'm killing it on home energy emissions. Um, four people living in a tiny two bedroom, um, that's, a that's quite efficient compared to other options. So that's going really well. Even with that driving, that's not on my behalf, my daily transportation emissions are quite low given the average. 
Once again, my travel emissions are nil, but if I had a bunch of flights, I can imagine this maybe being the highest category for me um, this year. And looks like being an average omnivore is not that great. My food emissions are higher than average. So maybe getting a bit more plant-based is, is an opportunity for me and my family in terms of in terms of tackling my footprint. And also my waste emissions are a bit high. So maybe I can do a, a zero waste challenge. And as you're looking at this, you might find your footprint is a bit, um, what is a ton of CO2e after all? So we have this little way of kind of looking at it in different, in different formats. So my 12.8 metric tons of carbon dioxide, that's, that takes about 16 and a half acres of forest to capture the carbon me and my family produce each year or it's about 30 barrels of oil being burned, or it's the equivalent of the emissions of nine trips across Canada in an average car. So that can kind of give you a better sense of what your footprint actually is in other cases. And finally, you can see here, I've done the Getting Started survey, we've all done it together, but there's these deep dive surveys. How accurate do you really think your results are based on those few questions we asked you? It's a pretty good, like estimate rule of thumb. Uh, but if you do these deep dive surveys, you can get a lot more detailed. You can put in your home energy data. If you have multiple cars, you can tell us about it. You can get a lot more fine tuned um, and get a much clearer uh, sense of your footprint. And finally, we have all these great action cards um, that you can take across all these different categories. And we have some um, here that are just specific to London. So let's say I want to help London reach its 34% canopy cover by planting a tree. We know a bit about the impact rating, how difficult it would be. I can get some more information. Um, and here's a great description of it, resources I can click on. So if I'm keen about this action, I can say, take this action. And it becomes a work in progress. Here in my dashboard, I've got this other tab called my action journal. So I've got this work in progress. I can add a few more as I'm going along. And then later, once I planted that tree, I can hop into this work in progress and I can mark it as completed. And ta-da, I've, I've managed to do something important when it comes to climate. So there's a bunch of these options for you. All right, that's what the tool looks like. Let me hop back to our presentation. Go back to full screen and we can keep going. All right. so. We've all measured our footprint. I just wanted to take a moment uh, to see if anyone was surprised by their results. Um, you, you guessed what your highest category might be. Were you right? Um, or was, was there a different category that, that surprised you? Uh, so feel free to uh, put a comment into the chat or if somebody's feeling brave enough to unmute and tell us uh, what their experience was, that'd be really great for everyone else to hear from. So I'll give it just a few moments. Kevin writes, not surprised, I travel by plane for work often. Yeah, that's the, the, the plane flights can really add up quickly. Um, we, have a, we have a steering committee member whose footprint was astronomical because of how much he flies. He, he calls himself a small factory. Um, but then it can, be, it can be something where you can then talk to your employer and say, do I really need to be there in person? Could I maybe do like a... Could I maybe e-travel? Could I maybe do a, a Zoom call instead? So trying to, trying to kind of make sure that travel is really valuable um, is, is something you can do. Anything else jump out at anybody? Just pause here for 10 seconds. I understand too, if you couldn't quite follow along in the time that we had, sometimes it's just nice to kind of see how the tool works and then do it yourself at a later time. I can keep moving along. So when you've got your results, a very common question to ask is, so what's next? Well, we can all take action. And the good news is that there's literally thousands of things you can do to start taking climate action. So when we look at that household carbon footprint calculator, we're, we're kind of focused on those direct impacts from our daily activities. And you can take action by reducing climate pollution in your own life. And that's really meaningful. But you can also be a role model for others, and you can also get political in your actions. So we like to think of this as kind of growing spheres, um, your personal space, your public space, and your political space. And 
I'll just walk you quickly through some examples of each of them. So with personal, let's look back at our results. Um, once you know where you stand, it starts to show you what things you can tackle to bring your own emissions down. And one simple idea that's kind of memorable that you can use with other people is the idea of fleet, heat, meet, and repeat. So fleet is how you move around. Can you leave your car at home when you're running errands? Or do you even need a car? Can you maybe switch to an EV? Could you maybe swap a long distance flight uh, with a local getaway? Heat is all about burning fossil fuels in your home. Can you replace your gas furnace with a heat pump or make your next stove electric? Induction stoves work really well and make your indoor air quality better too. And then meat, can you reduce or eliminate red meat? If you focus on these big buckets, you really don't have to sweat the small stuff. These are like the big levers we find when it comes to personal footprints. But you can go even bigger and take your actions and ripple them out. Your public spaces where you talk about all the cool stuff you're doing, because that makes your impact even bit bigger. For example, let's say you switch from natural gas furnace to a heat pump to heat your home. That not, not only reduces your emissions, but shows your friends and neighbors that this is a totally normal, doable thing. So this is social influence at work. And studies have shown that people are more likely to get solar panels when their neighbors have them. So doing these actions and doing them publicly are really powerful. Um, so, and also, so just keep thinking about how you can involve people in your network when you're taking your own climate actions. And finally, you can make change on the political level. Big systems change is when millions of people put pressure on them. Just be a part of that burgeoning pressure. In fact, don't even think about your own carbon footprint. Or, or pardon me, when you're thinking about your own carbon footprint, think about where you don't have a choice. And that's often a good clue of something that really needs political change to, to make a movement. Governments have the power to move swiftly and decisively on climate but they need the public to tell them what's important. And one of the most powerful things you can do is to advocate for the change at this level by voting, speaking up, and joining in. You really don't have to reinvent the wheel here. You can join groups and organizations pushing for better climate policy and action. I'm sure Len has a bunch of member organizations that are doing this right now. Um, and also when you write to an elected leader, you speak for hundreds of others who feel the same way, but haven't taken the time. So that's it. You can make change in your personal space, your public space, and your political space. And you got a few examples from each level. If any of those examples kind of caught your attention or made you interested, that might be a good indicator of what you should be doing next. So follow that thread. All right. I hope that I've kind of kept it within my time. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I want to thank all of those of you who took the dive with me and measured your carbon footprint. And if you haven't yet, you know, after the session is over at your own speed, hop onto our site, play around with it. Um, for a lot of people, it's, it's a really good kind of um, contextualizing aha moment when it comes to the climate crisis. And if you're looking for what to do from here, I encourage you to do the footprint and then do your more detailed deep dives. And we've got some other programs you can find out about on our site. So that's it from me. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jake, um, for walking us through that. Excuse me. I'm going to move along for the sake of time and um, bring up our next speaker, and then we'll take some questions at the end if anyone has it. So I'd like to introduce you to Nicole Karsh. She is from the London Environmental Network and works as our Greener Homes uh, London manager. She has an honors in degree in social justice and peace studies, a master's in environment and sustainability, and is vice chair of the city of Sarnia's environmental committee. She's recently moved to London area. Um, her social justice and environmental sustainability background has driven her to work towards offering Greener Homes London services, resources, and tools that consider energy equity and actively tries to incorporate traditionally marginalized groups and communities. Her current role at London Environmental Network is largely building the home energy assessment offerings and managing a project called the Nonprofit Resiliency Project, which will work with nonprofit organizations to increase the sustainability of their buildings. Um, take it away, Nicole. Awesome, thank you so much. And hi everyone, it's great to be here with you all tonight to conclude this really amazing home retrofit webinar series.
So thank you to Marianne for organizing everything and a huge shout out to all of the guest speakers that we've had over the past two weeks, um, including Jake, that was a really great presentation. So thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and thank you for the introduction. Uh, and as you all know now, my name is Nicole and I'm here to share with you some resources and information that you can look into to create a more comfortable, efficient and greener home. Uh, next slide, please. So before I delve deeper into the main portion of my presentation, I just wanted to provide some context as to what Greener Homes London is and what I do in my role as manager. So Greener Homes London is a program of the London Environmental Network and our focus is exclusively on residential sustainability. So in essence, we provide residents in the London and the surrounding area uh, with the guidance, resources and tools to assist them with reducing their environmental impact at home. And our ultimate goal is to create more sustainable homes. Next slide, please. So there are countless ways that an individual can go about creating a greener home and a greener space. And I just wanted to briefly go over some of the services and offerings that this program provides, which Marianne has previously touched on um, in ways that we support individuals in their sustainable journeys. So the first is community engagement. And this program does a lot of this. We participate in community events with outreach groups. We put on group presentations, uh, run webinars and workshops that are surrounding eco-friendly living. And at our in-person events, we have been handing out free sustainability kits uh, to folks that have engaged with us. And they are filled with items that are meant to help jumpstart a sustainable journey. So they contain LED light bulbs, native seed packets and faucet aerators. And just this past summer, um, we've organized and attended more than 20 events, which was a lot of work, but it was really fun. We've also created a variety of retrofit resources, um, which are all available for free on our webpage. And these range from easy to implement behavioral changes to do it yourself projects that fall under key environmental categories. And we also have information on deep retrofits. Um, these are more extensive upgrades that lead to at least 50% in energy savings. And we also have info sheets on available financial incentive programs that offer assistance for implementing uh, green changes. And we've also recently launched our EnerGuide audit service, which is the first step uh, to accurately determining a home's energy efficiency. And it's a comprehensive assessment of an entire home from top to bottom and is conducted by a registered energy advisor. And then lastly, we also have a few projects that we offer that have very specific focuses. One of them is a residential rain garden pilot program, uh, which we just wrapped up last week for this year. And this involved working with 15 local homeowners to assist them with the installation of a rain garden. And in turn, they were reimbursed for eligible expenses that they incurred as a result of that installation. And the other one is the nonprofit resiliency project. Um, this one has also, this, or sorry, this one has just launched. Um, we launched it officially just last week. And we will be working with a number of nonprofit organizations that own multi unit residential buildings um, in order to increase the sustainability of their buildings. And this project is incredibly important. Um, as it works to include traditionally underserved and underrepresented groups within the residential realm. And it's a great way of promoting energy justice. But for the purpose of this webinar, I'm just going to focus on the two in the middle um, for the rest of my time. Next slide, please. So Greener Homes London has a number of resources that can provide guidance to anyone, regardless of where they're at in their sustainable journey. And over the next couple of slides, I have a few different examples that I'll go over. If you tuned in last night to last night's um, webinar session, you would have heard from my colleague, Jamie, who provided a lot of really great information that comes straight from our sustainability guide. So this guide is a robust document. It's full of information surrounding energy efficiency, uh, water conservation, waste reduction, biodiversity, green infrastructure, and transportation. It also includes a list of green innovations that you can look into and provides estimated costs for purchasing materials and or professional installation fees. It 
also delves deeper into available programs that offer financial assistance for implementing green modifications. And we list a number of programs that are targeted for low income households. Another resource that we have is our virtual home checkup presentation. This is about a 17 minute uh, presentation that you can watch at home at your own pace. And it essentially goes through key information within the sustainability guide in a more condensed, uh, easily digestible way. And we've also created and added an action plan template. This can be downloaded from our webpage and it's designed to help an individual plan some changes that they wish to implement at home. So this form includes space for three action items, for example, um, adding weather stripping to doors and windows for air sealing. It has space to fill in the approximate cost, when an individual would wish to have that implemented, and a spot to list anticipated reductions. And the hope of this form is to motivate an individual to stay on track with what works with their interests and their budget, and then see their plans take form. Next slide, please. We've also been putting together um, some resources on easy to implement DIYs that can have quite the impact. For example, a pack of faucet aerators are relatively cheap. They're very easy to install on your faucets. Um, and aerators essentially work to break up the flow of water into multiple smaller streams. And they're much more efficient than simply not having one. We've also put on several webinars um, with experts in the field attending as guest speakers. And some of the topics that we've included and covered just in the past year include solar energy, winterizing your home, greening your yard, and sustainable home finishes. And you're able to review these recordings. It's a great chance to learn from individuals that specialize in these areas and to get a sense of trends and emerging technologies. And lastly, we also have these really amazing videos of home tours. Um, that were captured with the help of Andrew Price, who is a local videographer. And you can follow along a household walkthrough and see how three individuals made upgrades to make their homes more efficient, comfortable, and cost-effective. And we're also working on creating more resources with a wider range of information, including a guide that focuses on and acknowledges the limitations that come with being a tenant but still wanting to be environmentally conscious. So I encourage you to check out our webpage periodically for new information. You can also sign up for our newsletter um, where you would receive relevant information to your email inbox once a month. Next slide, please. So I'm going to spend the remainder of my portion speaking about our EnerGuide audit service, um, providing a quick overview of what it is, how you can book an audit and then briefly mention two of the biggest incentive programs around. So an EnerGuide audit is conducted by a registered energy advisor with NRCAN, which is Natural Resources Canada. It is designed to capture how a home uses energy. So they're highly comprehensive assessments involving the entire home from basement to attic, um, as well as the exterior. And for an audit to be conducted, the advisor would need to have full access of the home including crawl spaces and any other hard to reach location. There are two types of audits. The first is a pre-retrofit audit, which is done prior to upgrades, takes around three hours, and, it essentially, and essentially after this assessment has taken place, the homeowner would then receive an EnerGuide rating in gigajoules for their home. And for this, the lower the number, the better the energy performance of the home. And then they would also receive a report which would contain um, a list of possible upgrades to then help lower that number. And after improvements have been made, a homeowner can then book a second or a follow-up audit, which is known as a post-retrofit audit, takes about half the time as the first, and this can show how a home has improved compared to the previous audit. Next slide, please. So these two programs are two of the biggest incentive programs around surrounding home improvements. They have similar processes um, in that you need to register, have a pre-audit done, implement changes, have a post-audit done, and then you would submit applicable invoices and documents in order to receive the grant. However, there are a few very specific differences. Um, for example, eligible retrofits and their respective grant amount is not the same for both. 
So definitely um, carefully review them before making plans for your home. So the one on the left is the Canada Greener Homes Grant Program. And with this program, a homeowner is eligible for up to $600 for the cost of a pre and a post undergrad audit, and then up to $5,000 total for the implementation of eligible retrofit. So a participant would be eligible for up to 5,600 total under this initiative. And with this one, a homeowner must implement at least one of the recommendations that's listed in the report, and this would have to be eligible under that initiative in order to qualify. And the Canada Greener Homes Program has also recently added a new component to their initiative, um, and this is an interest-free loan of up to $40,000 with a repayment term of 10 years to help homeowners undertake major home retrofits. And the one on the right is the Enbridge Home Efficiency Rebate, and this one offers $5,000 in financial incentives to install energy efficient retrofit measures, and this rebate is exclusively for Enbridge Gas customers. With this initiative, a homeowner must implement at least two recommendations that are listed in the report, and those two have to be eligible under this initiative. And with this one, the more upgrades that are done, the more money that becomes available. So homeowners are able to apply for both of these grants at the same time. You just can't receive uh, duplicate rebates for the same qualifying energy efficiency improvements and energy assessments. So in other words, you just can't apply for rebates for the same things or rebate stack. Next slide, please. So I have a screenshot here of what our online booking form looks like. Um, you can access it on our webpage. It is split into the two different types of audits and a homeowner would select which one they need, fill out the information and then pay the fee. And at that time they would receive a confirmation email and then our team would be notified of the booking. So our cost for a pre-audit is 450 plus HST and the cost of a post-audit is 250 plus HST. And while this does seem like a lot of money upfront, programs such as the Canada Greener Homes do have grants that cover the majority of audit costs and then you would get that back. And we are also working um, on finalizing a variety of resources revolving around audits, including how to check if your home is eligible for one, how to prepare for the energy advisor's arrival, and then what to expect the day of. And these will be finalized very soon and will be available on our webpage. So just to end um, and wrap up my presentation, I wanted to share with you this really great video that we actually just had finalized this afternoon. So you will be the first to see it. Um, and it features Andre, who is one of our energy advisors. So I will just pass it over to my colleague Mackenzie uh, to play the video. Andre Kiernan, and I am a registered energy advisor for the London. I think it's just low. An environmental network. I've been working with Len since January. Twenty twenty two started in Red. Sorry, guys. Innovations, and I was interested in learning. Sorry, can it load in silence and I can answer a couple of the questions in the chat, or does it have to load in real time? That might be a good idea, Mackenzie, because I, I saw them keep popping up while I was speaking, so we can go through. That's a good idea. Um, so Mary Kay asks if the $40,000 loan can be used towards solar panels. Um, Nicole, would you like to answer that or would you like me to? That's a great question and it's actually not one that I know. So if you do know it, I'll pass it over to you. It is the $40,000 loan is directly tied to the Greener Homes Incentive through the federal government. So you actually need to be a Greener Homes Incentive participant um, and then you can use the loan to any of the measures that your energy advisor puts on your um, Energuide audit. 
So they do suggest that if you're interested in solar, you let your energy advisor know. So the first step is still booking your EnerGuide audit. Um, your energy advisor would put any recommended upgrades on your report. And then the $40,000 can be used towards any of the items that are covered on the Greener Homes um, incentive through the federal government, including solar, um, air source heat pumps, insulation measures, doors and windows, uh, air sealing, domestic hot water replacement. Uh, yeah, and there's some specifics about all of those, but yes, solar does count. And then your second follow-up question was, um, you only need one audit and it can utilize both programs, and that is correct. Um, you will need a new audit if you had an old one done before, what was the date, Nicole? Can you help me with that? Is it December of 2021? Yes. So if you had an audit done before then, you will need a new one, like for a previous program. But if you get one now, then it is good for both the Enbridge and the Greener Homes Incentive Program, although they both have fairly different timelines and you still need to adhere to their timelines. So Enbridge is shorter, um, a shorter period of time for you to get your measures done. And then the Greener Homes Incentive is longer and is over a course of five years at this point. So you can get your audit now and not do the, you could plan on getting solar in like four years or something like that, and it would still be eligible at that point. But if you need to do the Enbridge ones, you need to go a little bit speedier, but they don't cover solar anyway. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the Enbridge one is quite short. Um, you have 120 days to get your pre-audit, implement the changes, and then have the post-audit. So you only have about four months. So the time limit on that is much shorter um, than the federal incentive, which is doesn't have any specific concrete timeline, and they have budget, a budget to last five years. So that one you have a lot more uh, leeway with. Okay, should we test the video? Oh, someone asks how much an audit costs. Um, they are generally between four and $500 for the first one and between two and $300 for the second one. And um, the federal government will give you $600 back at the end of the process to cover them. So you get it reimbursed, but you do need to pay for it up front. Um, First Nations communities have the option to um, not pay for it if their band applies. Yeah, if Chippewa chooses to apply for it as a group, then the residents can not pay for it up front. Um, and we are chatting um, with Treaties, Lands and Environment Department, as well as the Housing Department on potentially getting that going um, for the new year. So it makes it a little bit more accessible, but um, either way, like the home that we worked on, on Chippewas of the Thames, the, the lady had already gotten her audit done and was already replacing her own windows and part in the process. So she did it on her own and she's getting her incentive money back from that separately from the project. So you can do it um, either way, you will get the money back eventually, but Hopefully in the near future, there will be that barrier lifted as well. Okay, let's try the video and see if it's loaded. And then if anyone has more questions, they can throw them up there. Sounds yep. good. We'll give it a go. Sorry about okay. the tech issues. Andre Kiernan, and I am a registered energy advisor for the London. Oh no. An environmental network. I've been working with Len since January 2022. Started in renovations, home renovations, and I was interested in learning how to develop or build more efficient building envelopes. So I took a couple of advanced building science courses, which led me to the energy advising path. The energy audit will provide a report that will advise the homeowner on how to reduce operational costs, improve the, the comfort of the home, and reduce the impact on the environment. This report will provide a list of upgrades that the homeowner can then take to their contractor. What these upgrades will do will reduce the energy usage of your home. Upgrade the insulation levels in your attic. You can add continuous insulation to the outside of your home. You can upgrade your HVAC equipment. 
You can add solar to the roof of your house. We can air seal to create a tighter home. All these upgrades reduce the energy uses of your home, increase the comfort of your home, and reduce the impact on the environment. So in order to incentivize these energy audits, the federal government has released programs. So there is the Greener Homes Program. So you can get up to $5,600 in rebates for upgrades like adding insulation or improving your HVAC equipment or adding an air source heat pump to your home as well. There's also the CMHC $40,000 interest-free loan. So these rebates and loans are certainly helpful to homeowners to improve their energy efficiency of their houses. One of the requirements of the program is to book a pre and post audit through a service organization like the London Environmental Network. To book your audit, you can go to our website and sign up and we will send an energy advisor like myself to your home to do your field audit. From there, you'll receive a report that you can share with your contractor to complete your upgrade. Once your renovations are complete, sign up with the London Environmental Network and we will send your energy advisor to complete your post audit. Once your second home audit is complete, you can apply to be reimbursed through the Greener Homes Program. To find out more or to book an audit with us today, head to londonenvironment.net. Okay, it was kind of like a 90s remixed version of the video, but I think we still got the point, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, Mary, that 120 days is not long when most things are backed up. Um, so my suggestion is to um, utilize the Enbridge program for things like air sealing and insulation that are not as backed up and then utilize greener homes for things that are more um, technological, such as, well, you need to use Enbridge first anyways, because you have to have a fuel burning um, appliance in order to use the Enbridge one. Um, and then afterward, you can do the greener homes one where you might wanna switch out some of those fuel burning appliances. So you have to be a bit clever with it anyway. Um, and Bridge doesn't really want to incentivize you to use less energy if you're not using their product. So um, I would start with the Enbridge one, do the, the air sealing and insulation, and potentially look at um, a door or something like that that you wanted to replace, and then look at HVAC or water heaters or solar down the road with the um, greener homes, because that's the one that the loan is going to be tied to anyway. You can't tie the loan to the Enbridge incentives. Yeah, that was great. That's all I was going to add to with the Enbridge one and the timeline is um, it's probably best to focus on the ones that you might be able to have implemented quicker um, and then move on to the federal incentive after that because the 120 days is not a huge amount of time. Um, even for getting an energy advisor to come in and do an audit of your home, depending on who you go with, um, you may have to wait a month or two for someone to be available. So um, the timeline is kind of a big negative of that program, unfortunately. Um, so anyway, thank you, Mackenzie. I'm glad that worked um, out because the video was by far the most interesting part of my presentation. But I just wanted to include some contact information, uh, my email, my phone number, and my website. Or my website. It's not my website. It's Len's website. But um, if you have any questions or wish to chat further, you can send me an email or um, give me a call, and I'd be happy to chat further. And if you have any other questions, um, we can address them now. Mary asked, yes, if the clock starts right after the first audit, and that is correct. And I think Marianne mentioned it earlier too, but everything that I made reference to, the videos, the guides, things like that, everything will be sent to you in a follow-up email, so you won't have to go look for it. It'll just be sent um, with every link available for you. Okay, thank you very much, Nicole. Um, we really appreciate um, your presentation, but beyond that, all of the work that you've put into developing those tools and helping that program launch. Um, we had a long series with six uh, 
presentations and these are the folks that helped make it possible. So we just wanted to thank them quickly. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing folks that are interested in coming. Again, it's free and open to the public on October the 19th. I'm gonna go back and put that information up for you. Um, we'll be doing a tour of the home and we'll have some goodies to give away um, and answer any questions that folks might have there and um, meet our, our participants that were taking part in all six of the webinars. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there. And if, uh, if anyone watching wants to come, they're welcome to come as well. We'll be sending out uh, a registration link through Eventbrite to anyone that's registered here. And if you're watching afterwards on YouTube, then please just check out our website and you'll find the information there on our event section. So thank you all very much for coming. Thank you, Mackenzie, for your help. And thanks to everyone who spent their evening with us. Um, I hope you go and enjoy the rest of your night. Bye.